God is love. And those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. Pleasure to welcome you all to Liverpool Parish Church today. Uh, a very special day, that doesn't mean so uh, for John and Dawn, but uh, the work for all of you to do. There's some bits for you to say in the service, the occasional amen, and there's some printed words for you to say as well when we get to it. Uh, but most of all, we need to make sure that you're supporting John and Dawn throughout the service, not just with your thoughts and your prayers, but also with your sound. So there are hymns to sing as well, that you can sing loudly. They can't see you, but they need to know that you're there. They don't need to know that you're mobile phones there, so please do make sure that it's turned up. We'll also be very grateful if you didn't throw confetti in the grounds. We begin with a prayer. Let us God of wonder and of joy, grace comes from you, and you alone are the source of life and love. Without you, we cannot please you. Without your love, our deeds are well. Ah, we make Sally have to sing our first name, and they do this.
Now I know, only in part, then I will go free, even as I have been free. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. I don't spend one second planning to hide. See, the most important thing is today, it's not today. It's not today. This is beautiful and wonderful and it's special and you will remember it. So it's not the most important day. The most important day is the last one. The last one. When you get to the end, what will you have found? See, the interesting thing about marriage is that people try and build a vision for their marriage and what it could be. Maybe they might be thinking that or not. And they look in all different areas for inspiration to find that. When God's word, the Bible shows us that exactly what it is. See, marriage is not a human invention, it is a divine institution. Whether our culture decides to change it, whatever way that they want, it is God's intent. And the way we understand marriage comes through Jesus' relationship with his church, the Bible That's how we understand it. How Jesus loves his church, cares for his church, how the church responds to Jesus, the gifts of himself. So if you want a vision for your marriage, look to him. And how he cares for his church. There's a passage in the Bible in Ephesians where it talks about Jesus will present the church to spotless, without blemish. Here we go, absolutely. Without blemish before the Father. So it talks about At the very end, and that is what's going to happen. Let that be the vision for your life. Have a glorious end for that last day. You know my hope is that on that last day we both be able to look back and say we have gone from I do to we did. We did. We made it through. Have a vision of a glorious end. But you need to realize that the process is long. The process is long. Now this is easy. It is. All the stress, I get it, has been difficult. But this is easy. You guys just walk around like movie star, everyone thinks that you're beautiful, it's wonderful, you eat loads, you enjoy that wonderful time. But this is the beginning. This is easy. But just wait a couple of years. I've been married 18 years. As you begin to change, you don't you need true endurance, not naive hope. True endurance. Let me give you a few things. See, I want you to be aware that as you see this long pro process for a glorious end, that the insignificant moments in your life are the most significant. We make probably five significant moments in our life, uh, decisions in our lives. We were to marry, we went to have kids, we went to get a job, move house, sadly for the son, divorce. Significant moments that are life changing, but it's not those significant moments that shape our life, it's the insignificant moments. The chip away that cause problems we don't do with them. See, the Bible says, what you treasure in your heart will overflow in how you speak, will overflow in how you live. The most important thing on your heart will overflow. So when there's heat, whatever situation, that's what's going to come out. So difficult things like no one because the toilet seat's not left over. You know, put it down, we don't like to do that. Oh, that's okay. So, so those sorts of things. But we laugh and we joke about those insignificant things, but they're the things that chip away, chip away, chip away, chip away. So big that you don't even expect to lose it. Be aware of the incident. Be aware that marriage is a fight. See, one key to fighting well is to lengthen your view of the battle. If you think that one week of shock and more combat will win this war, you're bound for this war. If you're looking for some quick fix, an easy answer, a one and done solution, then you'll never really understand the nature of the fight. And so many people go into marriage or deal with conflict and issues in marriage. Shock and all, shock and all. We continue, we continue. We need a longer view for the fight. The problem is people think the fight is for each other. And the fight is for your marriage. It's for your marriage. <coughs> marriage is a fight. See, Marriage is a conscious pursuit of death. I die to self. That no longer is about me, but it's about we. That I can be the other person's 
ideals, the other person's preference before we do it. I sacrifice and I submit for the cause of the other person so that they can flourish and they can blossom. That's what Jesus did for the Jesus. What the Bible says, what I should be doing when it comes down to the Lord, our culture, and many people disagree with that because they misunderstand what that's all. See, it takes the, the issue of the church, and the church is able to follow Jesus. To, to submit to Jesus, to, to see what Jesus has done. And then the other side of the verse is it says, Husbands, love your wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better and for worse. For better and for worse. For richer and for poorer. For richer and for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us be found. According to God's filial, in the presence of God, I make this vow. I go and take you, John, to be my husband. To have a child. From this day forward. For better and for worse. For richer and for poorer. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. Till death and sweet heart. According to God's holy will. In the presence of God, I make this love. Guide us by your Holy Spirit, that we may receive your redeeming grace and reflect the perfect unity of your love. For you live and reign, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who shared us, be among you and remain in your ways.
would like to take this opportunity to welcome both family and friends to this very happy occasion, the wedding of our daughter, Dawn, to John, who we've known for some time now. You have all played some part in the lives of Dawn and John. We remember those who can't be here, especially John's mom, Doreen, who I'm sure would have been as proud as we are now. Before I go any further, I am sure you will agree how beautiful the bride looks today. Mm -hmm. We are both proud of her. It only seems like yesterday when Dawn was a brownie <laughs> with her bottle hat and I had the weekly job of ferrying all her friends to their weekly meetings. At the time I had a little minivan and was amazed how many brownies <laughs> would fit in it. How fascinating. It was a bit like the TARDIS machine, where you've got more people in than you thought you would do. During her time at Brownies, from Doc, she, did, she earned, now earned a tea maker's badge, which I'm sure will now come in handy, especially for John. Dawn has always had a great love of animals. <coughs> Sorry and pursued a career in veterinary nursing. She would regularly arrive home with stories of the day's antics, usually whilst we were eating our tea. <laughs> <laughs> this would normally be in graphic detail and often with remnants on her uniform. <laughs> also on occasion, she would bring home waifs and strays who needed to be tended to. Dawn then chose another career path and trained to be a cardiologist, sorry, cardiology physio, physiologist. <laughs> Should have practiced that a bit. <laughs> so, John, we can safely say your heart is in good hands. <laughs> John, may I say welcome to our family and that we are so pleased to have you as our new son-in-law. You clearly love Dawn, and we know you will look after her. What more could a parent want for their daughter? So thank you. Now, as you begin your new life together, it is said, when children find true love, parents find true joy. Here's to your joy and ours from this day forward. So finally, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to ask you all to stand and raise a glass to join me in a toast to the new Mr. and Mrs. Gordon Mr. and Mrs. Gordon Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you all here today for the wedding celebration of Dawn and John. For those who don't know me, my name is Karen and I'm Dawn's little sister. Oh. Yes, it's been the job, my job to imitate my sister for the last 43 years. <laughs> From the moment Dawn realised her sibling was on the way, she knew life would never be the same. As she once said to mum on a regular shopping trip, when our new baby comes, I won't be able to have toys anymore. <laughs> Dawn was, um, for those of you who, who know us already, you'll know that we're quite different in many ways. And being Dawn's little sister has had many memorable moments. Dawn was always the tidy one, whose things were neatly organised in her cupboard in the sideboard in the living room, whilst mine were thrown in and the door was shut quickly. Dawn always had this amazing ability as well to save her pocket money. Um, whilst I had the, at the first opportunity, uh, I would spend it or already owe it to Dawn before I would <laughs> When we were younger, Mum always used to like to dress us in the same outfits. That meant even if I hated the outfit the first time round, I would inherit it again. Many times <laughs> As we got older, Dawn loved nothing more than pinning me down to practice her sculpt plaques. 
which I remember as being torture. This would often end up with me screaming for mercy, but I had the most amazing facelift. <laughs> One of our favourite hobbies was roller skating up and down next door's driveway, as it was much smoother than ours, and we would often pretend we were Torval and Dean doing the bolero. Well, Dawn's always been a bit of a dark horse as well. Um, and not only did she not tell me that she was learning to drive, she failed to tell me that there was a man on the horizon as well. Oh. I remember coming home for a visit, and Mum obviously had something that she wanted to tell me because she looked like she was going to burst. <laughs> on a trip out for a girly lunch, Dawn left the table to go and order the food. Mum then got, couldn't contain her excitement any longer and blurted out that Dawn had a date. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly spat my drink out and mum then panicked and said please don't tell her I told you <laughs> now how was I supposed to do that when it was written all over my face Dawn returned to the table and detected that something was going on and we both had guilty looks on our faces and said to mum you've told her haven't you <laughs> guilty as charged so here we are today, and I can't say I'm surprised, as I, I knew in the end that you would marry John. So much so that I bought all the things for the hem party before he even proposed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on, this, on this wedding day of my big sister and my new brother-in-law, I, could, I couldn't be prouder. So we were both one to Miss L's, and we're both now Mrs B's. And I love you, and I will always be there for you. <laughs> And I wish you both well, happiness and wealth in your new life together. Um, my name is Phil. I'm John's best man. And uh, I've known him for 20 years now. And in that last time, we've been really close, more like brothers, really. Um, and I'm just honoured that John's asked me to be his best man today. Um, well, John and Dawn both asked me because uh, I asked John to be my best man when I got married to my wife Janet. And uh, we've just been so close ever since. Now, um, I couldn't talk about John really without talking about Darren. <coughs> Awesome, Mr. Hog John. But um, not long after I, I, I made friends with John, he said he was going on holiday to Turkey with Mark, so he encouraged me to go. Uh, while I was in Turkey, um, I well, before we went out, John said to me, Do you know what, Phil? I think you're going to meet a wife in Turkey. And I just sort of laughed. You know? So, uh, anyway, we went on this holiday to Turkey, and I did meet a wife, she's sitting on that table, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, <I'm not> John. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, while we were there, um, the first time I saw my wife, I thought, you know, she was Turkish because she was dressed up. She was doing, we were doing, like, uh, uh, an evening of Turkish dancing. Um, and I remember John, after it finished, he went across and he, he said something to her and she went, all right lad. <laughs> so she wasn't serious after all, which I found out the next day. Um, and then we, we just had a brilliant holiday, all of that so went and uh, fantastic time. Most best man speeches are about embarrassing the groom, but I'm not going to do that. But there was time when we did fall out of He's looking worried now. Um, one day I was in John's house in the living room, and the little top window was open. And it was about 10 to 3, Saturday afternoon. And suddenly I could hear this sound of this uh, volume of people singing this famous song. And John went out to the window and slammed it shut. He said, I'm not listening to that. I live in Anfield, by the John, way. <laughs> John lives very close to Liverpool's ground. 
um, with John being a, a blue, a true blue Evan fan, me being a true blue Reds, I said, what do you mean that rubbish? And we had a few words. <laughs> I said, well, I'm not listening to your rubbish, and I walked out. We didn't speak for about two weeks. <laughs> So uh, I could talk about John all, all night, really. Well, carry on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there's always been, since I know John, there's always been a little bit of sadness about him because I know he wants to get married and find a wife. And now he's done it, and I'm absolutely over the moon for them both. You know, I think they're a peaceful couple. Um, I'm just on to be their best man. And uh, I just like you all to uh, toast the cu happy couple. Not in the grill, but in the drinks if you could stand. Um, give a toast I'm just to John and Dawn, but also to Irene and Rod for a fantastic day that we've had. Cheers. Cheers. Those who know me know that I know how to talk. So I just want to thank everyone that's here. I'll tell you what, I haven't got a family. My mum and dad passed away. The rest of my family aren't here. So my real family are here. It's my new mum, dad, and my beautiful wife, and all these people here. And everyone here are my friends, and my brothers and sisters. So after this wedding's over, I want them to know you can come round we'll go to yours and we'll raid your fridge as well. <laughs> no, you can raid ours first. Okay. So that's what you want to We're going to be friends, brothers and sisters. And it's more, it's our wedding, but you're part of our wedding. And it's not just from today. You know, Dawn's going to meet all my friends. They're going to be her friends as well. So, you know, I mean, they're like a new family. Um, so today, can another toast? Can you give a toast to my mum who can't be here today? This is Doreen, you don't have to stand up. But this is my lovely mum Doreen, I oh, lost last year, but she's gone to paradise, so I'll see her again. But she would have loved to have been here. So, a toast to Doreen. 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 And many people met Doreen, including James over there, and the other Jimmy, across the park, do you remember that? Mm. Yeah. I've got a poem for Dawn, before I thank a lot of people for what they've done to me. Right, let's see if I can find the uh, technology. I'll get it in a minute, so let's switch it on here. <laughs> this is a poem I wrote for Dawn, alright? So you're a beautiful star and a lovely flower, and I get to love you more by the hour. You grow in the honeydew meadow of love, my precious little turtle dove. You're everything I've prayed for and just a bit more. So thank you God for giving me this girl, a sweet and little diamond pearl. So love and hold for all my life, and yes, at last, because I couldn't be happy all my life, could I? <laughs> Joke. I've been told to speak now because I can't do it at my funeral. <laughs> Janet said, don't tell any more jokes. <laughs> Sorry, Janet. <laughs> uh, anyway, all this works, this is working out quite well, so we can always have another one, can't we? <laughs> so what I've lost in my family, I've gained in here right now. There's people here, you know, they, I'm going to tell them about them in a minute. But uh, I'd like to thank Irene, Rod, Dawn, and also you know, everyone on this table now. They're all my family and friends right now. Uh, I'd like to mention a few things. I want to thank Jed. Years ago we said, you're like the Eagles song, Desperado. I don't know if you know the song. <laughs> you always choose the Queen of Diamonds and she beat you if she's able to. Choose the Queen of Arts. She's, all, she's the best one. And I've got the Queen of Arts today. 
Um, you've got the queen. The big family of eight in Norris Green, they all had ten. So the family years ago in Norris Green, you know, big Catholic families, weren't they? And I'd like to thank Anne on behalf of all the family in Mormon and Chris who couldn't make it. God bless you all. I want to thank Anne and the girls who used to carry me on with had cut knees and we had short pants. Mrs. Borden, Johnny's cut his knees again, so thanks, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'll be honest, like years ago I was looking for a wife. I'm looking at, you know, let's start hiding things. You know, girls look for husbands. I was looking for a wife. Um, I tried internet and all this stuff, I tried everything. And I was trying too hard. But the moment I left it to God, and I've heard this many times, the moment you give in, I said, I'm, I'm going to stay single the rest of my life. I met this beautiful woman. And so when I found that, but the moment you give in, you just leave it to God. And that's how I met this beautiful lady. Uh, we drank a toast to Doreen, so I've done that back to Trump's. <laughs> <laughs> but as is, you know, Stella. <laughs> I'm talking of Stella. I want to thank James <laughs> and Sean helped me out when I lost my mum. I had a few drinks and nearly got beat up and these two helped me out, put me in a taxi and got me out the way. So thanks lads, alright. You're still always around for that. <laughs> <laughs> you can have fun with your life. That cheesecake, I think. Don't be cheap. <laughs> yeah. I'm marrying a wonderful lady, well, I've married a wonderful lady who adores me like I do her. She's any guy I could imagine for, imagine for and she's an absolute all-rounder. She's brilliant inside and outside, and that's all I ever wanted. Like my mum, Doreen, she was a very caring woman, big heart, and that's all I've ever wanted. I, I'll give the same back, you know. Uh, so I just want to thank some people now. I've already thanked Jed. Thanks for the Desperado uh, advice. <coughs> it worked. Um, I want to thank James over there and his dad, Obad. If you want the best spaghetti bolognese, <laughs> Obad. He does outside of Italy, but it gives you so much, your belly explodes. <laughs> and I want to thank James for giving me encouragement for looking after me dear mum, Doreen. I had more encouragement off him than my own brother. He said that I kept my mum alive for like 15 years after, like Jed's doing with his mum now. And thanks for the encouragement, James, all right? Uh, Alan. Alan Wright, I want to thank you, Alan. Where is he? Yeah. Alan Wright was standing up for me, accepting counsel, but no, I don't want to go too political. I can talk about backstabbers and all that, but Alan went into the boss and gave them a good grilling over a certain thing. Thank you, Alan. All right, mate. Dave Connor, same thing. St. Alan's Council. Dave took me in his house, gave me something to eat. Sound like a trap, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> but you can all come to ours now. Yeah, Pat, you know. yeah I'll be with uh, Gypsy. Uh, no, but um, thanks, Dave, for uh, being a mate. No worries. You know, beans on toast. And, you know, no no expense spared with Dave. <laughs> but even something like that, I was so happy. And I've always loved Dave. That's you never scouting forget out. people. <laughs> scouting yours? There you go, Dave. You know, and you've got a Liverpool girlfriend now, you know what I mean? Well, thanks, Dave. Um, I want to thank Bill, this lady. I want to thank Bill for what he's done today for the Beatle coach, picking everyone up. And Bill's a good mate from the cabin. So, Bill, thanks a lot for your help, mate. Appreciate it, alright? Uh, I want to thank Gary for being there through my dark times. When I couldn't, no, I'm going to say, but it'll be dark times, all right. Thanks for being there. Gary, I was a bricklayer, Gary was a joiner, and I used to say, I would have loved to be in a joiner, but I couldn't get the afternoon off for the course. Because <laughs> <laughs> those bricklayers, that takes seven years, you know. <laughs> I, want thank, I want to thank Irene and Rod for standing by me over a certain thing. They stayed with me over, I won't say again, but they, they backed me up and stayed with me. So that means a lot. So I've got a new family now, you know what I mean? And this lady said she's got the son she never had. I, I, no problems. And old dad. <laughs> that speech was great, by the way. <laughs> uh, Richie and Jenny. 
I want to thank Richie and Jenny. Yeah, okay, I'm a Christian. When I first became a Christian, I left the world of nightclubs and drinks and fights and all that. And then I thought, is this all there is to it? You know, well, see you next Sunday. Well, these guys took me back, Sunday dinner and all that. They invited me for Christmas dinner, and I was like, three of the kids were all playing Christmas games at Christmas. You know what that should be like? Thanks very much. I appreciate you, okay? Don't be embarrassed, by the way. <laughs> so, um, that's all, really. Just a final toast to everyone who's here, okay? I'll stand up. Okay, a toast to everyone who's here, because you are all our friends and our brothers and sisters. And uh, I want to remain that way and stay together, okay? If you need friends, me and Dawn are here. Do you want me to go to us to get the fridge full? <laughs> uh, so a toast to everyone here. Cheers. Cheers. God bless. I'm just going to give some presents out now for this table. <laughs> This is for you, bro. There'll be Phil and Jan for if you won't like it. Have the bag as well, pal. I'm surprised John's still with us at this time of the day because everyone who knows John, you know, he likes to have a little sleep. <laughs> and uh, that's not a bad thing. Maybe we should all take a leave after John's book. Sicilian, you know. But so, be ready, be ready.